everyone and welcome to this week's edition of the Against All Odds podcast. My name is Daniel Coker and I'm going to be your, your host for, for today. This week we are privileged to have as a guest on this podcast um, a very distinguished person, someone I've known for many years. We went to school together, it was a few years behind me. And um, he's someone who's an entrepreneur, has pursued an entrepreneurial journey for many years and has built an international clothing brand. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming to Against All Odds, Mr. Tete Flaha. Tete, tell us a bit about your journey from Ashimoto School and up to where you are now. Thank you, Daniel, for such an amazing introduction. Um, well, you've said almost everything, uh, but yes, I was in Ashimoto School. That was in 1987 makes me feel rather old <laughs> um, yes <laughs> um, I started from Northridge Lyceum before I got to Archimoto school and uh, back in the days I started this fashion journey at a very tender age uh, pretty much when I was in form one form two um, something led me into it uh, I mean I wouldn't say I'm from a very privileged home um, we, we we just got got on with it technically i mean uh i was brought up by a single mother you know there were challenges from home in terms of financial challenges and all that and there was a time when um we had a party to attend um i was 12 at the time mm -hmm. and i didn't want to bother my mother with new clothes and stuff like that mm -hmm. you know uh, before that, I normally take great interest in what tailors and dressmakers do. Mm -hmm. Normally when my mom takes us to tailors to get clothes done, I'm watching what they're doing, how they're going about stuff and mm -hmm. things like that. You know, so when this party came up, I thought, well, for me, seeing something puts me in a position to be able to make it mm -hmm. or try my hands on it. Mm -hmm. So I thought I've seen enough. To be able to actually put that in practice mm -hmm. you know so uh, I told my mom well I want to do something for myself she thought that was a joke I mean mm -hmm. it sounded like a joke someone that young trying to do something for at 12 himself. years old yeah at 12 you know I trying guess. to make something for himself that sounded like a joke but I was like yeah I just want to try that you know so she had some old outfits you mm -hmm. know back in the days they used to wear this rather big boo-boos and stuff like that mm -hmm. plain pattern boo-boos with mm -hmm. designs and stuff but she wasn't going to use them again so she gave me one of those to unsew and try and see if i can cut mm -hmm. uh, my size out of it something smaller you know mm -hmm. so yes i did that and made a jumper i mean rather unique jumper i quite remember giving myself some muscle teeth <laughs> <laughs> yeah, open front, tunic neck. I mean, pretty basic and simple, you know, mm -hmm. but yes, um, I did try my hands on it and it worked fantastically well because even before I started, she was like, oh, let me get uh, the tailor down there to come have a look mm -hmm. at what you have cut or mm -hmm. to help you uh, in the right direction. I was mm -hmm. like, okay, cool, get him down. By the time the tailor came, I'd already cut it and the guy was like, yeah. It seemed like the guy knows what he's doing. Some truck. <laughs> so that's how it started. Mm -hmm. So little by little, I started making things like that throughout my school years, mm -hmm. you know. And I mean, as I was growing, I was progressing. Mm -hmm. I was learning from books, you know. Mm -hmm. I was reading fashion books and mm -hmm. fashion journals and, I mean, pattern cutting and all those things. Mm -hmm. I was just helping myself out and practicing on a lot more. So by the time I got to Form 5, I think uh, a lot of my colleagues have actually get... When I started, it was a joke, like mm -hmm. back in Motown. You know what Motown is like? Yeah. I mean, people will laugh at you. Oh, do you so, make so your... Motown yeah. is Ashimoto School because yeah, yeah. we have a global audience. Uh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's Ashimoto. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, people take the mickey out of you. Mm -hmm. They think it's funny. Uh, how, how, can, how can you be making your own clothes? Is mm -hmm. that a joke or stuff mm -hmm. like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but... I mean, I didn't let that get me down, you know. For me, it's a, rather motivates me to do a lot better, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I concentrated on what I was doing. I was focused, you know. The fact is, look, I didn't really have much of an option because for me, 
it will be stressing my mom to get her to see a tailor or a dressmaker. Mm-hmm. So it will be taking that responsibility upon myself to make it happen, you know. Mm-hmm. So I didn't have much of an option but to continue pursuing, you know. So I continued like that. And by the time I got to form five, six form, most of my mates have rather gained confidence in what I was doing because mm-hmm. it started actually admiring the clothes that I was wearing to school, mm-hmm. my school uniform and stuff like that I was making mm-hmm. them. Mm-hmm. So now they started giving me their stuff, their uniforms and stuff like that okay. to be making for them. Okay. You know, so that's how it all started. By the time we got to upper six, uh, we had a group of students from the Ballard High School in the US at the time to um, for an exchange program, basically. Okay. You know, so they came down, we entertained them, we took them around and all sorts of things. So at the end of their trip, we decided to actually stage a show for them, a fashion mm-hmm. show where we, the students, would be modeling the clothing and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So we contacted Nora Barman and Molly Okujato to come support us. Okay. And my entertainment prefect at the time, Daniel Supe, he suggested mm-hmm. that, well, that if you can gather some of your collections that you've made for people as well. Mm-hmm. And back, in, back then, I mean, as I was progressing with my stuff, I was making clothes for my mom. My mom is the size of a model. I mean, mm-hmm. she's, she was really slim at the time, mm-hmm. you know. And I was making for her friends and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, I can gather some of the stuff that I've made for mm-hmm. them to stage the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I got all that, brought it in, and we staged a fantastic show. And I mean, that sort of exposed me to most of the students, getting to know what I do and what I can do and all that, mm-hmm. you know. And Motown is a, yeah, Achimoto school mm-hmm. is a big school, you know. So yes, once you, you, you actually expose yourself to a majority of the people there, it's like, once you're out of there, that's how you actually network, you know. Mm-hmm. So it started from there. Mm-hmm. So I've, from there, I mean, I've completed sixth form. I'm doing it part-time at home, doing my own thing and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And one of my colleagues back from Achimota was like, you know, with what you do, I was planning a fashion show in Tema, you know. Uh, I've got this design, I've got models and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I think it would be a great opportunity for you to put your stuff out there you know so uh, <clears throat> try and see what you can do mm-hmm. so me being me i didn't have any fabric i, I didn't i didn't <laughs> even have the money to go and buy any fabric <laughs> and stuff like that uh-huh. so i thought okay let me see if i can actually apply to companies and seek some sponsorship mm-hmm. you know so one hot afternoon i made my way to makola mm-hmm. right in the middle of the heat Charlie. Mm-hmm. got to the gtp building mm-hmm. Walked straight into the offices, and fortunately, who did I meet? Uh, Madame Deborah Quarte. She was the I am. Um, oh, what was her position at the time? Anyway, I don't remember exactly where her position was, but she was in a position dealing with a lot of the fashion stuff for the company. You know, so I was like, oh, well, this is me, my name. This is where I've come from. I've just uh, completed Achimoto School, and this is what I do, and I will. I'm trying to stage a fashion show with a colleague, you know, mm-hmm. and this is where the show is going to be and stuff like that. And she said, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, I know about you. I know your mom. Uh, she wears some lovely outfits that you make mm-hmm. for her. And mm-hmm. I mean, most of her friends uh, are pleased by it. But mm-hmm. yeah, I, I trust you can do something good. So mm-hmm. I'll introduce you to our marketing manager. Mm-hmm. So she did an introduction and the marketing manager and sponsored me with a few fabrics. Mm-hmm. And so I started making my collection ready for the show. That time, I mean, we're at North Kanisha, I was using my mother's garage mm-hmm. for my production. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had a little machine there set up and doing my own thing, you know. Mm-hmm. And so what happened was I went to see the setup for the show, the models and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And to be honest, I was a bit disappointed. Mm-hmm. Um, it didn't feel like this is how I want to bring my collection out, mm-hmm. you know. It didn't feel right. So. I backed out of the show and now <clears throat> I've already started my product, my production, you know, mm-hmm. so I definitely need to put those products on a fashion show because it's a sponsorship. Mm-hmm. So I need to do something about mm-hmm. it. At the time, just around the same time, a good friend of mine who was my mate in Achimota as well, Steven Caesar, okay. he was presenting Smash TV. Mm-hmm. So they had come to see me then to produce clothing for them to use on mm-hmm. Smash, you know. So he spoke to his um, manager at the time mm-hmm. in Smash, 
that this is the sort of predicament I found myself in, mm -hmm. where I've got sponsorship and I haven't got the show anymore, you know. So Nana Champa was like, you know what, I'll introduce you to someone who can be very supportive and helpful. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> go to Golden Tulip. I'm just going to give her a call now. Her name is Benny Brown. Mm -hmm. So go to Golden Tulip, go and see Benny and talk to her about this and she will give you the best support ever, you know. Mm -hmm. So I thought I was actually going to Golden Tulip to get sponsorship. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I went there, saw Benny, lovely woman, and guess what? She was an old Dutch mortar. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so the whole idea of, I mean, me from much better school and she's so enthusiastic and very positive. Okay. So she was like, you know what? Don't worry. I'll get you on a show at the Golden Tulip. Okay. I'll get you all the models you need. You wow. Know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get you all the models. She's an amazing woman and I always give her credit to date, you know. You know, I'll give you all the models you need. And we're going to stay a fantastic show this Christmas. Mm -hmm. That was November 1994. Okay. You know, so she just made a call to the uh, Ministry of Tourism at the time. Mm -hmm. Ore Kwamofa was minister at the mm -hmm. time. So Ore um, did an introduction with Oreku, told him what um, exactly I was up to. And Oreku agreed mm -hmm. that, yes, he's happy for me to stage the show for them. Mm -hmm. So fantastic. That's all done and sorted. I've got a show now to present. Good. And around the same time, the policy of GTP Textiles at the time mm -hmm. was that once they sponsor you, mm -hmm. the uh, marketing executive will need to come and inspect whatever you are doing with their collection, with the fabrics, you know, okay. so they know you are producing in mm -hmm. the sort of, you're meeting the ethical values of their company. You okay. Know? So... Uh, the marketing director um, came over to see what I was, uh, what I was doing, you know. Uh, that's me, a um, 19-year-old man in my little mummy's garage, <laughs> you know, doing my production. Yeah. He came over there, saw the product and was like, mm, this is amazing. You know what? We will rather prefer that you use these collections mm -hmm. for a fashion show for us. Mm -hmm. We are doing the Sika o Sika. Mm -hmm. um, ruffle at the time mm -hmm. you know so if you could do this show for us mm -hmm. i think the next show at the time was in takradi mm -hmm. so if you do this show for us and you can actually wow our audience mm -hmm. with your collection mm -hmm. trust me we're going to go further than that mm -hmm. so i was like yeah this sounds good mm -hmm. sounds like the beginning of beautiful things to happen <laughs> you know so i I, I, obviously, I was so motivated. I started putting in a lot more designs and mm -hmm. stuff like that. You know, got me on. I did the show, Takradi, wow them. The whole market, we did back in those days, mm -hmm. we used to do it for the market women. Okay. And it was around the time that all these African prints and stuff like that were mm -hmm. associated with market women, mm -hmm. old ladies, mm -hmm. kaba in sleet, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm traditional you know sort of environment and then i went to a completely different direction with african print mm -hmm. i went vibrant with it i went more youthful with mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. i was making smart dresses mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. casual shirts mm -hmm. and i mean something that will sort of relate with my sort of audience mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and that caught up like a fire mm -hmm. it's just while the market women they will just went crazy about it mm -hmm. while the population out there mm -hmm. you know people what started happening was the sort of fabrics that i select mm -hmm. to host such fashion shows mm -hmm. damn those fabrics just go off the shelf so quickly oh okay. so yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because people are seeing how versatile yeah. those fabrics will be used okay. you know okay so trust me it it, it just got me so attached to the company you know mm -hmm. they just they just fell in love with me technically mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and i was hosting all the uh, sales promotional shows around mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and obviously those sales promotional shows were captured on tv okay you know so that was how the whole business of my fashion thing started mm -hmm. and publicity here and there tvs newspapers mm -hmm. all over new 19 year old boy on the market doing mm. wonderful things mm. and i mean in a nutshell that's how tete plus started wow yeah <laughs> so did you ever i mean it's, i didn't know you, you came from a single parent home yeah. you know, did you ever imagine that this 
little thing that you're doing, you know, in, in your mother's garage, it yeah. would grow to become a, an international, br- international brand? Um, never in a lifetime. <laughs> never in a lifetime. But I was ambitious and I know, I mean, with ambition and a drive, I, I can take things to any level, basically. So although my focus was not necessarily I'm going to be an international brand, I didn't put myself, I didn't put any impediments in my way of mm-hmm. moving forward. Mm-hmm. You know, anything that comes my way, any opportunity. Sometimes it's not, you don't even see it as an opportunity, but whatever comes my way mm-hmm. that I believe I could use or I could utilize to pave way in various directions, mm-hmm. I do. I do take it, you know. Mm-hmm. I, I've got that sort of uh, drive in me to mm-hmm. capture things and move on things. So it doesn't surprise me that, I mean, my label will go as far as it's going, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And I still see myself growing bigger than mm-hmm. I am now. I mm-hmm. mean, I, I, I'm i still pushing ahead and I know that, I mean, mm-hmm. with the right sort of, a plan mm-hmm. and with the right attitude, mm-hmm. yes, we'll, we'll get there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So one of the themes that we have picked up, and for those of you who are just watching this for the first time, this is something that we started just a few weeks ago. It wasn't planned. It was very spontaneous. I was out in Portugal with some people and, and, and the whole idea sort of cropped up. A, a theme that we've picked up in the seven people we've interviewed so far is that it's always important to, with whatever you're doing, to do it with a mind that you're sort of um, doing it, you're being watched by, by, by the whole world, you know. And it's quite interesting that you mentioned the fact that this lady that you met when you went to look for sponsorship was, she knew your mother yeah. and she had seen the clothes Mm-hmm. that you had made for your mother mm-hmm. you know is it is it really a valid i mean i think i i, I found it amazing because like i said everybody we've spoken to mm-hmm. you know and who's who shared their, their careers path with us mm-hmm. seems to be emphasizing on this thing that whatever you're doing do it to the best of your ability because you never know who's watching you never know who's standing on the sidelines you know is it has that, this been your experience that is very true that is very true very well said to be honest because you know my mother is very particular, mm-hmm. you know. I love her to bits, but trust me, we fight and we argue more <laughs> often than any other time when I'm making clothes for her. Because she's very specific and particular about the way she wants her outfit to come out. Mm-hmm. But I take all the time and do it for her wholeheartedly. Obviously, she's not going to pay me a dime for it, but mm-hmm. yes, I, I, I use the passion mm-hmm. to create something that will be appealing not just to her but obviously appealing to a whole lot you know Mm -hmm. um i'm doing it for her to be happy you Mm -hmm. know not necessarily for others to see and be pleased but Mm -hmm. for just to please her Mm -hmm. you know but out of the goodness of that it has actually generated into better things Mm -hmm. you know so i mean for me I, i i take it in a specific direction but it's gone a whole way to be beneficial to me. Mm. I mean, it's created a future for me, basically, mm. you know. Mm. Yeah, so, yes, whatever you're doing, just keep in mind that everyone is watching. People will be watching. So I'm very particular. I'm very particular about feedback. To date, mm-hmm. I'm very particular about feedback, good or bad. I take it on board. Mm-hmm. I make the best of it because I believe I learn from it. Mm-hmm. No matter how good you think you are, there will be certain things that you can improve on. Mm-hmm. So I always take customer feedback. It's really, really necessary to me. Mm-hmm. Fortunately, I get a lot of positive feedback because I have worked on past feedbacks mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to make things in the right direction. Mm-hmm. But even at this stage, if I do get bad feedback, yes, I take it on board. I, I, I'm very critical. I'll take each on board, see the sense in what the feedback is, and if it requires improvement, it will be improved. I mean, some people are just unnecessarily difficult. difficult. Yeah, yeah you, you expect that. That's not a problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's not a problem. But mm-hmm. when it comes to constructive feedback, yes, mm-hmm. I do take them on board in 
every detail mm. and I make use of it, mm. you know, because I, for me, the customer is king. Mm. You know? Yeah, it's quite, yeah. it's quite interesting. <laughs> um, being a male and um, going into clothing or fashion, you know, it seems like you, you, you have a very strong mind or you don't really care what people think. Sick. Yeah. And again, these are these are themes that we are picking up yeah. um, by talking to people who have succeeded. Yeah. Everybody says the same thing that yeah. if you're too worried about what somebody thinks yeah. or whatever it is, you know. <laughs> I mean, what what's what's your thoughts on that? You know, I'll tell you something. This is rather interesting. <laughs> it's really interesting that you raise this as mm-hmm. well. You know, because um, back in Achimoto School, mm-hmm. you know, we have a needlework section. Okay. And that needlework section is only for women. <laughs> okay. I don't know if it's changed <laughs> right now, but for my seven years in Akimoto school, yeah. it's always been for women. That's true. I remember so, that. Yeah. yeah. So they would have deprived me mm-hmm. of my ability to mm-hmm. improve. Mm-hmm. But the good thing is my art class mm-hmm. encouraged me to do greater things in the design direction mm-hmm. because, I mean, uh, a lot of my art teachers saw the potential in me in terms of my creativity. Mm-hmm. And when I was in Form 1, for mm-hmm. instance, I don't know if you know, remember Miss Noy. Yes, I do. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Miss Noy, she was Slezal's mistress at the time. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. The first time she saw my works in, in, in uh, Form 1, she mm-hmm. decided to take me on extra classes for free. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She got nothing out of it mm-hmm. just to help me improve mm-hmm. On what I'm doing mm-hmm. because she saw some potential in me, you know. And I think a lot of my art teachers did see that potential mm-hmm. and encouraged me and mm-hmm. helped me mm-hmm. in that direction. I mean, even my house master, Mr. Lalaton, mm-hmm. may you rest in peace. Mm-hmm. I mean, interestingly, I met Mr. Lalaton when I was actually in primary school. Okay. Um, they 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 were marking, I think, O level papers. Mm-hmm. At Waik at the time, mm-hmm. and my auntie then, she was a caterer. Yeah. So we used to go help her mm-hmm. serving the teachers and mm-hmm. masters and stuff like mm-hmm. that at Waik, mm-hmm. you know, just to get some small part time money and stuff like mm-hmm. that, you know. So I met, interestingly, you know what happened, <laughs> how these people you got to know me. I was going to serve them, I think it was okra and something that I had on the tray. Yeah. And when I went upstairs, I ended up pouring it on someone's artwork. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, but my, my rather charming and innocent face made them warm up to me. So, like, a lot of the teachers and stuff like that came to calm the situation down and mm-hmm. that's how I got to. So, when I got to Achimoto School and I realized it was my house, my staff was like, oh, do you remember me? Was like yes, I remember you. <laughs> you had it anyway. Yeah. That's just by the way. Yeah. So cool. So, in terms of being strong-headed yeah. and ignoring what others think about you, that's the only way you can actually survive. Because whatever you do, you will get people who have negative things about it. We will mm-hmm. get people who make negative comments about it. Mm-hmm. But if you you have that mentality mm-hmm. that look. I'm not going to care about how people see mm-hmm. people like me. Mm-hmm. I don't care about what people think about people who do this sort of job. Mm-hmm. I've got passion for it. Mm-hmm. I believe I can make something good out of it. Mm-hmm. I will go for it. Mm-hmm. I will do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I will do it. Mm-hmm. I go down. I can go down, down, down and do everything. All the dirty works, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know. I mean, I, I know that these days a lot of people... Um, artists and stuff like that they all consider themselves as designers mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. they don't go into the craft of actually designing pattern cutting selecting fabrics mm-hmm. making or mm-hmm. I, I do all that look when i'm in ghana i go to makola myself mm-hmm. i go to fabric shops in italy i go to fabric shops in with German, anywhere in the world, I will go there myself. Mm-hmm. I will pick the fabric. I will check the texture. Mm-hmm. I will see the fiber content of the fabric, mm-hmm. you know, to determine what these can do for me, what mm-hmm. I can use these for, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. I, I don't sit back in the luxury of my office or home mm-hmm. just sketching designs and thinking, mm-hmm. oh, that's... No. Mm-hmm. I, I go down mm-hmm. and do the groundwork, mm-hmm. you know, and I believe to succeed, these are the 
elements of life that you need to pick mm. your craft mm. from. You mm. know, you, mm. you need to you need to be able to go down there and do everything in spite of what others would think or mm. say of you. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's that's actually quite an interesting um point you've made there, you know. How important I mean it sounds like you've 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 been a hustler for a long time. You've, oh yeah, I'm still a hustler, man. <laughs> <laughs> We're all hustlers, right? <laughs> but you seem to yeah. have you know, you seem to have a certain drive and a certain yeah. passion, you know. But also uh it sounds like you're somebody who pays attention to detail. Yeah. You know, and, and I bring this point up for a reason because I, I believe that attention to detail is critical. You know, these days people sort of gloss over things, like they, they do things anyhow and all that. But just listening to you, it sounds like attention to detail is a key attribute in your journey to date. And what, what can you tell us about that? It's quite interesting you picked that up because mm. I, I didn't even think I have actually spoken mm-hmm. about how much attention I pay to detail. <laughs> you know, so it's, it's interesting. <laughs> You've just made, that's very smart of you too. Pick that up from just the way I was talking. Mm -hmm. You know, yes, it's key to me. For me, that is what makes you a designer. That's what distinguishes you Mm -hmm. from the rest. Mm -hmm. You get it? Mm -hmm. I believe anybody can make any type of clothes. Mm -hmm. But to stand out Mm -hmm. will only be based on how much attention you've paid to each intricate detail. Mm. of what you have made mm. Mm. you know and I, sometimes I, I find it very disturbing when i'm dealing with ghana mm-hmm. tailors and dressmakers mm-hmm. for that matter because uh, it looks like this is a big gap mm-hmm. that needs to be closed when it comes to dealing with Ghanaian tailors and dressmakers because the 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 most of them actually overlook this Mm -hmm. attention to detail Mm -hmm. so sometimes when i'm organizing my tailors or i'm going through sending details with them Mm -hmm. and they they feel like i'm doing too much yeah i feel too picky too picky Mm -hmm. this is the explanation Mm -hmm. i give to them Mm -hmm. that look to be able to make it in this sort of industry Mm -hmm. you must pay attention to this Mm -hmm. you know it could be a millimeter, mm. but that is the difference between a wonky shirt mm. and a well cut shirt. Mm. Mm. So please, mm. it's really, really key. It's really, really essential, mm. and I make the best of it. Mm. It's it's quite interesting to say that I I used to have some outfits made. Um, I interviewed um, Yawan Sako, who was the former executive vice president of Unilever, yeah. and he was based in Nigeria for many, many years, mm-hmm. and and. Whilst in Nigeria, he used to dress in these sort of kaftans. Yeah. And I, I kind of like kaftans. Yeah. So I, I spoke to his wife because mm-hmm. he was very busy at the time. And she organized quite a few for me. And they're so expensive. I, mean, I used to pay about, if I remember correctly, close to 300 pounds for one of them. 200, 300 pounds for one of them. Yeah. You know, and I eventually found somebody else in Ghana who mm-hmm. kind of made something similar. But... Mm-hmm. The quality, the quality, oh. the detailing, the yeah. finishing. Yeah. I mean, the Nigerian tailors seem to have a a, a professional, yeah. international approach. finish yeah. approach. Yeah, you know. But the other tailors were like, oh, just take it like that. You yeah. know, that's that kind of attitude. Anyway, that's just a point. Yeah. Uh, but I, I think that's something we can work on because mm. I'm currently using Ghanaian tailors and I mean, um, craftsmen mm-hmm. and. They are gradually understanding Mm -hmm. what I mean when it comes to attention to detail because they know that, look, if you don't do it rightly, I'll reject it Mm -hmm. and it's not getting here, Mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So they they have gradually warmed up to the fact that, look, it's got to be done right. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just about managing them, Mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. you got to manage them to be able to understand why it is essential for them to get it right. Mm. Because if you're paying for the quality, mm-hmm. then you must have the quality. Understood. Yeah. Understood. So, Tete, it sounds like you're a very creative person. I mean, you, you've mentioned as well, just listening to you. Yeah. Um, how have you transitioned from simply being a creative person mm-hmm. to building a brand, to mm-hmm. building a business, and actually mm-hmm. becoming... 
business minded because there's lots of people sitting out there who might be watching this mm -hmm. this podcast who are creative by nature you yeah. know but then to actually build a to brand build a brand mm -hmm. to to get into sales and marketing to look mm -hmm. at supply chains yeah. you know to find a team of a production team mm -hmm. you know who actually do the the, the operational side of things yeah. You know, not everybody can successfully do that, do that and actually, yeah. again, build a brand. Yeah. You know, can you just tell us a bit about your experience on, on, on that front? Um, in all honesty, it looks like a lot of the information I have given sort of sums up the sort of approach that you need to put in to get all these things done together. The whole idea is not just about being creative and sitting home and sharing your creativity with yourself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you need to put it out there mm -hmm. you need to find a way of putting it out there mm -hmm. you need to know the channels that you can use to appeal to the right audience mm -hmm. you need to know what sort of quality you want to put out there mm -hmm. and i mean honestly there are a whole lot of workshops and stuff like that that you can pick most of these things from mm -hmm. and that is another thing that i will be um embarking on very soon like mm -hmm. open workshops in okay. ghana okay. you know where i can get people and train mm -hmm. people to actually mm -hmm. get into mm -hmm. the business side of such industries mm -hmm. you know and move from the creative side and build into the business side because i mean it doesn't take a day mm -hmm. you know it it, it takes a period but it all depends on the mindset that you have mm -hmm. and your approach Mm. towards dealing with most of these things i mean you how you move your creative side into your into the marketing side of things mm -hmm. how you do it into the production side of it mm -hmm. how you can get it right through production it's a whole long process mm. you know but yes it's something that i will actually set a workshop and get people gradually into these things yeah so did you have any um influence when you're starting out. I mean, you mentioned Maori Okujito, who at the time was the only person who, the only tailor, if I can say so, fashion yeah. designer, who was actually mm -hmm. making, seemed to be making a serious living out of um, his, yeah. his craft. Yeah. You know, did you have any inspiration whilst you were, I mean, were there any people globally that you had inspiration from? There was a, a guy who passed away recently, Ablo, I can't remember his name. Yeah, Veg Veg Virgil. Ablo, yeah. yeah. I mean, did he have any inspiration wealth globally or locally? Is there anyone who kind of, inspired you on this journey um yeah at the time that i came out as a designer there were quite a few designers out there mm -hmm. maoli was there nora banama was there mm -hmm. and ben nontra was there um who else uh, uh, ajidu of shapes okay you know yeah yeah quite a quite 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 a few designers mm -hmm. and um yeah they were they were doing their thing it was um quite inspiring scene and there was shared julia as well Let, okay. let's forget that yeah mm. and yes it was it was quite inspiring seeing um how they were doing on the market at the time you know but i i will say i was more inspired by a lot of the <clears throat> international designers uh, there was isi miyaki at the time mm -hmm. i mean right now i think he's concentrating a lot more on perfumes than mm -hmm. clothing but his clothing at the time were mm -hmm. very unique, you know. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, those sort of things actually inspires me. You know, there was um, um, <clears throat> this other uh, guy, what's his name again? Uh, John Galliano. Okay. Yeah, oh, his collection always mm -hmm. inspires me. I mean, yeah, yeah quite, quite interesting look on things. So, yeah, in general, the, there's, there's been quite a few people yeah, in the industry that have been and inspirational from far okay yeah so <clears throat> related to that mm -hmm. did you have any mentors who kind of helped you along this journey or it was mentorship from afar i mean it sounds like yeah um, unfortunately around the time that i started there wasn't any mentorship or support from designers close to me around the time mm -hmm. i think they were more busy trying to promote and sell their stuff rather than yeah help other trying people. To, exactly trying to support other people but mm. yeah 
but I mean now uh, I have rather I'm rather in the position mentoring other young designers mm -hmm. and supporting them to um, come out big and mm -hmm. I mean even back in Ghana I trained quite a, a huge number of mm -hmm. them as well you mm -hmm. know and I mean a lot of them have done really well in the industry and stuff like that so yes um, it will it will be Mm. It, it will be good if we can take people up like that and mm. yeah, give them the necessary support. Mm. Yeah. So what's unique about the Tete Plaha uh, brand? I mean, I, I see the outfit you're wearing right now and yeah. it looks pretty amazing. Uh, unfortunately, I'm a slightly bigger size than you. I'd, 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 have, I'd have asked for it. Um, <laughs> oh, no worry. This is rather very simple and basic. <laughs> but, but, but let me get you on myself. <laughs> Now that yeah. I talk about it, now I, th I think, oh, let me straighten it up. <laughs> yeah. Well, so what, yeah, what's unique yeah. about the brand and also your processes? I don't know. Is there anything yeah, unique the about... Yeah, the my products. Mm. In, in all honesty, I produce all my stuff in Ghana. Okay. You know, I use craftsmen and artisans from Ghana. So uh, you're providing I, employment? Yeah. Okay. I try to provide employment for mm. them mm. in Ghana as well, mm. you know. And it's good because uh, we end up sending foreign exchange back there because I sell mm. most of my stuff. Abroad, you know, internationally, UK, US, mm -hmm. Dubai, mm -hmm. Doha, yeah, mm -hmm. all over the world. Anyway, mm -hmm. yeah, it's easier and better, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah. So basically, obviously, with my sort of attention to detail, mm -hmm. I know what unique fabrics to select mm -hmm. and how suitable they are for various designs. I also use craftsmen who don't just do machine embroidery. They use hand woven embroidery. Oh wow! So okay. yes, yeah. So all my embroideries are hand woven. Okay. You know, so I create the pattern, cut it for them, and then mm. they do the embroidery with their hands mm. on there, which is unique mm -hmm. and comes out mm -hmm. in spectacular style and fashion. Mm. Um, yeah, my embellishments are all hand embellished as well. So. Mm. And that actually gives a sort of uniqueness in terms of um, they are personalized mm -hmm. to the TP designs mm -hmm. only. You know, mm -hmm. you won't find anybody else in mm -hmm. the same or doing it the same way. You mm -hmm. know, even when you copy a Tetapla design, you mm -hmm. can see the difference so clearly. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's it's um, that's the uniqueness basically right. of my product. Yeah, I've right. seen a few people attempted copying in mm -hmm. a couple of my designs, mm -hmm. and if I show you the difference, it's so clear yeah. and mm -hmm. disgusting because they don't actually know how I came by that. Right. Okay. Yeah, they have just seen it and thought, oh. This is embroidery. We can do it as well, mm, mm. and then they end up using machine embroidery, and it messes the whole thing up. Right. Yeah. But these are things that I have actually designed with my hands. Mm. You know, mm. so you can't actually nick my hand mm. <laughs> when you <use laughs> to do that. <laughs> you know. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's yeah, it, it's a uniqueness of, of how my things come out. You that's know. Good. Yeah, that's good. So Tete, what what motivates you out of interest? What drives you? What pushes you? What makes you what inspires you? What what what? I would say so much inspires me. Uh, the monetary aspect. Should I say that? <laughs> <laughs> Quite a few of the people we've interviewed as well. Before, yeah, so the same yeah, thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yes, obviously that. Um, but for me, I think when I do something beautiful and unique. Mm -hmm. In itself, I mean, that's an inspiration for me when I see something looking outstanding or when people are wearing my stuff and they, they look great in them. I'm mm -hmm. like, damn, mm -hmm. I just love this, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. So, as a person of color, you know, have you experienced any racism or any such um, challenge in your path and your, in your journey? Um, you know what? Sometimes I try not to see it as racism mm -hmm. because I I know, obviously, in the sort of position I am in, I will face different types of people. Mm -hmm. There are those uh, who like me 
mm-hmm. there are those who wouldn't like me. Mm-hmm. You can't force them to. Mm-hmm. I can have it among black people. I can have it from white people. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. so I wouldn't necessarily say strongly racism. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. yes, but yes, we've had. I've had people who have diverse or different views about me mm. uh, as an individual as mm. a business mm. and whatsoever but i don't take it too hard i mm. mean you, you we, we don't live in the perfect world mm. so i i do expect challenges here and there mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. but to overcome such challenges for me mm-hmm. is more is, is important mm. yeah. so moving on we're almost done um it's a quite a, an important question because it's been noticed that people of color tend not to support each other, to be supportive of each other's success. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm championing your course, which is why we're having this, this podcast, because I identified you as somebody who has had an amazing story, you know, that I believe the world needs to know. And um, Jewish people, there's a Yiddish word called Faragin, which simply means to be wholly supportive of another person's success. I mean, Jewish people as a community are very supportive of each other. You know, what has been your experience um, on your journey with support from our community? Because I, I haven't had uh, a great experience. You know, yeah. anytime I'm doing something, it's like people are wondering, oh, what are you doing? Why are you doing yeah. this? What's, what's, you know, what's your plan? You know, but yeah. it's something that I've experienced, a yeah. lack of support. Yeah. You know, I don't know if you've also experienced that. Yeah. I mean, I'll be honest with you. In general, yes, there is that lack of support. Mm-hmm. But in the same vein, I've had really supportive people Mm. amongst family, among friends who Mm. just focus on supporting the brand TPD. Mm -hmm. But yes, in general, I mean, I think we can do a lot more. Mm -hmm. You know, you you will get people who, funny enough, wants to have your stuff for free. But Mm. then you see them in an Armani shop Mm. buying and paying (laughs) high prices for Armani. (laughs) You get what I'm saying? But... Because they know you as yeah. a person instead yeah. of you know me. Yeah. So support me and let yeah. my business grow. Yeah. I don't get my fabrics for free. Yeah. <laughs> I don't get my tailors for free. Mm-hmm. I, I have to pay yeah. to get these products done. Mm-hmm. And I have to pay to live. Absolutely. So <laughs> <laughs> if you want to take my products for free, yeah. then what are you trying to do? You know, but yes, it is it is in our society. I think we need a lot more support when it comes to uh, because when you see my stuff and you think this is beautiful and you want one, mm. I think the best thing to do is to pay for it and have it, mm. you know. Mm. And that's what a lot of people do, and I give them credits for that. Mm. You know, there are some fantastic people out there, mm. they're doing it, they're buying, mm. you know, they see, they buy, mm. they mm. pay for it, mm. you know. There are a lot of names I can mention, but I just don't want to mention any yeah. name now, okay. you know, because I don't know how they will feel about it. But yeah. yes, there are a lot of supportive people there. Mm. But there are those, I mean, a lot more people there who could also support. Mm. Mm. But they are not. I mean, mm. and it's not that they are financially challenged. Mm. I don't mind to help people who are financially challenged. Yeah. If yeah. if I see you and you you ask for my clothing, mm. and I know that you don't have or you can't afford it, I'll give it to you for free, and I do that mm. all the time. Mm. Mm. But mm. those who piss me off is those I know are financially <laughs> stable, and they don't want to pay for it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's like they just refusing to support the brand. Yeah. Yeah, that I find rather annoying. Mm, mm. <laughs> yeah. And it's it's very unfortunate. I think people should change their attitude. So let's support each other. After yeah. all, what, what do you lose if I become rich? Yeah. I'm your rich friend. I, I'm your rich yeah. friend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't lose anything, you know. So yeah, make me rich and you'll be rich as well. And both of us both of us will have a good time on a holiday somewhere. Why you know not? what I'm Why saying? Not? On not? a lovely island. <laughs> you know? Yeah. We I interviewed someone uh last week and, yeah. and one of the things she spoke about, and mm-hmm. this is Grace Cropper do say, mm-hmm. one of the things she spoke about was that, that the fact that it's important to know your value. Yeah. You know, and what you've just said, mm-hmm. you know, just sort of buttresses that point mm-hmm. that your designs are very intricate, they're very unique, mm-hmm. you, you, they're different, mm-hmm. you know, and there is a value, there's an intrinsic value in the yeah. brand. You know, so when somebody's wearing 
your clothes. There's some value that's exactly you know, wear with pride. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So let's let's appreciate the, the value that is on the brand and let's absolutely. support each other. You know. So, so the final question: um, What advice can you give to uh, a black Asian or minority ethnic person who might be wondering or considering a career in in fashion designing? And entrepreneurship, because you're not just a fashion designer, you're also yeah. an entrepreneur, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think, you, I'll be honest with you, when it comes to advising people, mm. for me, that's something I don't do. Okay. Yeah, and I don't do that because, honestly speaking, people have their own mentality or way mm -hmm. of doing things. Mm -hmm. But I'll just tell you how I did it, mm -hmm. you know. If that works for you, mm. it's fine. Mm. Mm. If it doesn't, mm. then sorry mm. to bother you. Yes. Mm. I am a very dedicated person. Mm -hmm. Extremely dedicated. I'm mm -hmm. focused and I'm determined. Mm -hmm. And I think if you can combine all these things, you are in the right direction mm -hmm. mm. of making it. Mm. You know, And fashion, like any other business, mm -hmm. must be dealt with with this sort of mentality. Mm. Laser focus. Focus, yes. And don't forget about the intricacies of getting the best mm -hmm. by paying close attention to all intricate details mm -hmm. when it comes to clothing production. Good, good, good. So Tete, if people, our viewers, want to get your clothing, where can they, where can they, is there a website? Is there something yeah. that places yes, them to go? Yes, the Tete Plaha website. Uh, that's tetaplardesigns.co.uk website. We'll put it at the bottom of the, okay, the comment section. Yeah. Yes. Uh, those in Bristol, you can get it from the um, Afro Street Shop in Bristol at the arcade. Those in Ghana, you can buy online. We will deliver to you wherever you are. In fact, anywhere in the world, wherever you are, anywhere in the world, we'll deliver to you. So, mm. yeah, online will be the best. Or you can contact us or you know, our Instagram page, Facebook. Mm -hmm. or Twitter. Contact us anywhere, basically. I mean, really, really easy to get in touch with me. Okay. Yeah, my telephone numbers are on all these platforms as well. Okay. So, uh, whichever way, you can get in touch and definitely we will cater for your demands. Wherever you are, we'll cater for your demands. Tete, thank you very much for your time and for giving us this opportunity to, um, to interview you. It's, it, it means a great deal to us. And I'm sure our audience out there will appreciate it as well. So thank you very much. Mm. And um, ladies and gentlemen, in closing, if you've liked this video, you've enjoyed this content, I'd like you to do three things for me. And this is very important because the YouTube, we're building the platform, you know, trying to create a voice for our community. And the YouTube algorithm works on comments. So not just watching it, but if you watched it, please put something in the comments, you know, just to trigger the algorithm, you know, something that you've learned and all that. Secondly, I also like you to like, like the video. These are all things that the algorithm picks up and share the video and also subscribe. You know, we're trying to build a huge platform to showcase our own community because there's hundreds of people out there, you know, who've done amazing things and who have an amazing story that can inspire somebody like you and somebody like me. So let's do this together. Let's build this community together. And I believe that it will, it will basically work out great for all of us. So thank you very much for your time. And uh, see you next week. Thank Lovely. you very much. Thank you too, Daniel. Pleasure. Pleasure. Pleasure.